Let's see, can we turn, can you try to turn off one of the lights maybe? That's the one. Is that the one? Yeah. Gay. It's a term that originally meant carefree and happy. During the 20th century, this term was also used to describe people that were attracted to the same sex. Carefree and happy, what positive attributes to have? Who doesn't want to be carefree and happy? Unfortunately, this isn't the case or how many feel in the LGBT community, especially gay and lesbian youth. The reality is quite different. Suicide is the leading cause of death for gay and lesbian youth. Gay and lesbian youth are four times as likely to attempt suicide as their heterosexual peers. Gay and lesbian youth that are raised in a non-supportive family are eight times as likely to attempt suicide as those raised in a supportive environment. Now these statistics, they're hard for me to even read. And no matter your sexual orientation, religious beliefs, political preference, we all have a role here and we all play a part. And it starts when we stop our silence. And today I'm gonna to share a personal story with you. It's my way of breaking the silence. In the fall of 1993, in my small, quaint, conservative hometown of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, I was starting the seventh grade. 13 is tough for anyone. And it was especially tough for my new classmate, Daniel. I vividly remember the day I met Daniel in social studies class. He reminded me a lot of myself. We were much shorter than most of the other girls and boys in the class. We both had blonde hair blue eyes, and we both like to smile a lot. Appearances aside, I felt like Daniel and I really differed at this point in my life. Daniel always preferred hanging out with the girls, being friends with the girls, and not in a flirty type of way, more of a best friend type of way. Daniel's mannerisms were very feminine, and it didn't take long for the high school bullies or junior high bullies to pick up on this. Daniel was an easy target. On a daily basis, Daniel faced bullying and teasing. They called him queer. They called him a girl. They referred to him as the gay kid. This went on for months and months until in the spring of 1993 of our junior high year, at the tender age of 13, Daniel hung himself in his bedroom. The days following Daniel's suicide, no one really talked about the reason behind it. No one ever mentioned it could have been caused from the bullying. This angered me at first. But the more I thought about it, I was angry with myself. I was angry at my own actions, or better put, my lack of actions. You see, I made no attempt to befriend Daniel. I had my own issues. I just wanted to fit in. And the best way to do that was to avoid the guy that was picked on all the time. I later realized that silence has social consequences. The years following Daniel's suicide, I began to develop feelings that I could not understand. I couldn't understand why. I just didn't have the same drive or urge to go out on dates with girls as my other friends did. But I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody about this. I decided it was gonna be a phase and I would put on a show until I would get over it. So for 10 years, I put on a show. I deserved an Oscar for my performance of a gay man playing a heterosexual for so long. <laughs> At night, I would bury my head in my pillow and cry. I would ask God, why are you doing this to me? Sometimes it got to be too much to bear and I thought that I could no longer carry on with the show it would be best to end, my, to end my own life. For 23 years of my life, I don't recall a single moment when a family member or a friend talked positive about gay people. Gay was a part of everyday language. It meant you were inferior. 
It meant that you were the greatest of all the sinners. It was used to describe something stupid. At the age of 24, I conjured up the strength to come out to my first friend, my closest friend. To my surprise, I was met with love and encouragement. My coming out journey did not just end there. It's been a journey that's taken over a decade and actually just ended this past Christmas. While I was at home, sitting on the couch next to my dad, he was flipping between Fox News and Shark Tank, I had had a couple glasses of wine, and I figured, now is the time. I looked at my dad and said, Dad, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I am gay. There was a pause, probably only seconds. To me, it seemed like hours. His response, I've known for years. I love you unconditionally, and I just want you to be happy. I love you and just want you to be happy. Those are the words that I crave to hear for so much of my life. Now it's been nearly 25 years since Daniel's suicide. Society has changed a lot since then. Gay marriage is now legal in all 50 states. Recent reports show a direct correlation between this and a reduction in LGBT youth suicide. More and more celebrities are coming out of the closet. Ellen has an awesome talk show. Gay characters are being portrayed in TV and in film and positive lights. Who doesn't like modern family? But these are things that they definitely all help, but it alone will not stop LGBT youth suicide. That's up to all of us. And no matter your orientation, your political preference, your sex, your age, we all share something in common. A love for each other. A love especially for our youth. And it's up to us to make a difference and stop being silent. It starts with a conversation. A conversation that I'm afraid that Daniel may have never heard. I love you unconditionally, and I just want you to be happy.